The CDC reports he killed about 2,300 people in 2023 alone. Yet another study from the International Society of Environmental Epidemiologists puts that number at more than four times higher, around 10,000 deaths. Joining us now is Dr. Andrew Dessler. He's the director of the Texas Center for Climate Studies at the Texas A&M University. The heat is top of mind for some people, doctor. If not, they are certainly feeling it. In 2023, there were a record number of heat-related deaths in the U.S. This is something we just talked about. Yet, tracking those deaths is tough to do. Why is that? Right. Well, I mean, deaths or extreme heat rather uh, kills people two different ways. It can directly kill people by just overheating them. And that's pretty easy for doctors to figure out. But we also know statistically that as the temperature goes up, people have other things like heart attacks. And so if someone on a hot day goes into a hospital emergency room with a heart attack, the doctor really has no idea if that's heat related by looking at that one case. It's only by looking at all the cases statistically, we can see it. And so if you just count death certificates, how many of them say heat-related deaths, you're going to vastly undercount how many people actually die. And that's really at the root of the disagreement here. Yeah, and a New York Times article uh, recently highlighted how the process of determining a heat-related death might differ from locality to locality, and that could lead to discrepancies in tracking these deaths. So what would a universal criteria look like when someone, uh, when determining whether someone died from excessive heat? Well, I mean, that's the problem. There really is no universal criteria. You have to know what they were doing. You have to know what their pre-existing conditions are. You have to know, did they have access to air conditioning? Were they drinking water? It's extremely difficult. And really, the best way to do it is to do it statistically by looking at all of the number of deaths uh, and looking at, uh, looking at the temperature and seeing if the number of deaths is increasing with temperature. And that's basically the statistical method that's the most robust way to do it. Hmm. Investigating heat deaths and mitigating the risks of heat takes time and resources, right? Considering the increased frequency and duration of heat waves, how have we seen cities and states investing in ways to track or mitigate deaths? Or have we seen cities and states actually investing in ways to track and mitigate deaths? Yeah, so just about every city, a big city, uh, especially in the southern half of the U.S., has a person who handles extreme heat. And most cities that I know of have heat plans. So tech, uh, Houston, for example, in, on the Gulf Coast has heat plans and they have cooling centers and things like that. And so, um, you know, that's the level of preparedness that we have. Now, what's gonna need to be done is there are a lot of people that just don't have access to air conditioning because 10 or 20 years ago, if you lived in Chicago, or Seattle, you didn't need air conditioning. But in the future, uh, we're gonna, those people are gonna have to have air conditioning. We're gonna have to figure out how to pay for that. And Professor, in the meantime, what are some of the things that we can do in our own lives to ensure that we aren't suffering from heat-related illnesses, especially as uh, society acclimates to a warming planet? Yeah, that's a really good question. And so I will uh, tell you what I always tell other people. And the first thing is, it's exactly the same thing as for hurricanes, have a plan. So you should have a plan for what's going to happen in a heat wave, what you're going to do if the power goes out. Make sure you have enough medicine so that if uh, you, know, you can't get to the pharmacy, you're still okay. Make sure you know what you're going to do with your pets. It's very important for people to understand pets can't stand the heat any more than humans can. So you have to make sure you're taking care of them. You'll have a plan um, if the power goes out. Can you stay with friends? Uh, can you get in your car and evacuate? Because this is a problem that's going to come up more and more. And, and you know, people have to have a plan. Don't wait until the power goes out, um, uh, you know, to say, what am I going to do? That, that, that's too late. Now, some people don't have air conditioning. And so it's not just a question of power going out. And they especially need to have a plan for what they're going to do in extreme heat. So start thinking about it now. Where are the cooling centers in your neighborhood? Where are the people you know where you can go? Do you have enough medicine? Just make sure all of that, you think about that in advance. Dr. Desler, before we let you go, uh, we have a few, few seconds left here. Um, we understand this is your wheelhouse. What other things are you watching for as we see our climate continue to warm? 
Well, I mean, it's important for people to understand that scientists have been predicting this for decades. Essentially, nothing happens in the physical climate system that wasn't predicted in the 80s and the 90s. And unfortunately, uh, you, you know, scientists have been saying this is going to be bad. And unfortunately, we're on the precipice of everybody else understanding, wow, the scientists who study this their entire lives were right. Um, and so I think that, you know, if I were someone who's concerned about climate, I, you know, the most important thing you can do is vote for elected officials who also support the climate, if you care about the climate. And so, you know, that's what you need to do. That's the number one thing to do to kind of for the next hundred years. Otherwise, you know, in, in the short term, there's really not a lot you can do other than, as I said before, make a plan for extreme heat. I mean, there's, there's, um, uh, that's basically it, but you know, vote. And a good reminder, too, to keep an eye on folks who uh, work outside without access to that AC. Uh, Dr. Andrew Dessler with the What's Texas right? check, Center. Check, check your neighbors. Yeah. All right. Dr. Andrew Dessler with the Texas Center for Climate Studies at Texas A&M University. Uh, Andrew, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Still ahead tonight on the next.